my river kids. I am loving your updates on Marco Polo. You picked some great verses last week to post around your house. And today I'm so excited for you to hear our story about another life changed by Christ. One of my favorite things to do in the city is go to the Museum of Science. They have these cool exhibits about the world that we live in and I just love to interact with the displays there and to see God's creation from a new perspective. And one of my favorite things that they do is this thing called macro photos where they take a camera and they go in really close to an object and you can barely even tell what it is. And then I try to guess what it is and then they zoom out and you can see if you were right. So I thought that we could play a little bit of that today and I'm gonna show you a video and it'll be zoomed in, see if you can guess what the object is, and then it'll zoom out and you can see if you are right. Hello, I'm going to tell you the story of Nicodemus from John 3. It was dark and a shadowy figure skittered and dashed through the alleyways, hoping that no one would see him. He was on a mission, one that could potentially cost him his life if someone happened to see where he was going. No, he wasn't Batman out to catch the bad guys, and he wasn't a bad guy either. In fact, he felt like he was a pretty good guy because he liked to follow all the rules. If he were at your school, you'd probably call him a teacher's pet. Who do you think that guy was? Any guesses? His name was Nicodemus, and he was part of a group of Jewish leaders called Pharisees, who basically thought that if you wanted to go to heaven, you had better follow all their rules perfectly. So, what was Nicodemus doing out in the alleyways lurking around at night? He had heard about Jesus, and he wanted to have a chat with him. That's great and all, but why couldn't he just go during the day, you might wonder? Nicodemus didn't want anyone to see where he was going. The other rule followers, the Pharisees, hated Jesus. They were angry that Jesus was going around saying that he had come to save everyone because they wanted people to come to them to say for help. And if someone saw Nicodemus and told the other Pharisees that he was with Jesus, he would be in big trouble. These Pharisees were always yapping about how much they love God. And yet, when God sent his son, they treated him really badly. That's called hypocrisy. Saying one thing and doing another. Kind of like when you tell people that the My Little Pony show is so lame. And then you secretly binge it at night when no one's looking. Or you catch your friend picking his nose and you tell him it's disgusting. But if you had a dollar for every time you've dug for gold, you'd be a billionaire. But something deep inside Nicodemus told him he just had to talk to Jesus. So he risked everything and went to see him at night. When he found him, he said, Hey teacher, we know that you've done tons of miracles and no one could do those things if he wasn't a great teacher sent by God. That was the problem. Nicodemus only saw Jesus as a great teacher nothing more. And Jesus knew that, so he replied, 
I'm going to tell you something really important, so pay attention. No one gets to heaven unless they are born again. What? Born again? How can someone go back into his mum's belly again and then be reborn? Now, I'm guessing you all know by now that babies don't come from storks. When you're in your mummy's belly, you're a tiny little squirt. Now, you're way too big to fit in there. Ooh, that, that just doesn't work. Jesus saw a, the look on Nicodemus' face, and it was probably like the faces you're all making right now, and started to explain what he meant. I'm not talking about physical birth. But spiritual birth, he said, I'm talking about something you can't see, like the wind. God's spirit can change you and you'll know he's there, just like you can hear the wind, but you can't see it. Nicodemus was confused again. Um, how could that even happen? He asked. Jesus said, aren't you a Pharisee? You should already know this stuff. Nicodemus just looked at him with the same face you guys make at school when the teacher says it's time for the test and you're totally not ready. Jesus went on to explain that salvation doesn't have anything to do with doing and seeing, but rather believing. He told him that people need to see things on earth like butterflies or ants, for example, in order to understand things about God. He mentioned the time that Moses put a snake made of bronze up on a stick so that everyone who was sick could look at it and be saved. What did people have to do to be saved and not die in the Moses story? They simply had to believe and look at the snake. What do people have to, be, to do to be saved and go to heaven? They have to look to Jesus and believe in him. And that's what Jesus was trying to explain to Nicodemus. Have you ever heard of the verse John three sixteen? That verse is part of Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall perish, shall not perish, but have eternal life. God sent Jesus to die to pay for our sins for free. You don't have to follow a list of rules or try your hardest to be a good person so that you can go to heaven. Even if you did a zillion good deeds, it still wouldn't be enough to pay for one lie because that's not how salvation works. Salvation is free. So what did happen to Nicodemus? Did he decide to stop following the rules and actually start following God? Well, the next time he's mentioned is in John 7, when the Pharisees were plotting and wanted to kill Jesus. Nicodemus kind of tried to defend Jesus, but he still didn't say that he believed in him. And probably because if he did, the Pharisees would turn on him like those fierce-smelling bug creatures turned on their evil leader in the Justice League movie. The very last time Nicodemus is mentioned in the Bible is in John 19, 39, when Jesus had already died. He had helped Joseph of Arimathea, a guy who secretly believed in Jesus, to bury him. So it seems like he really did end up believing, but still kept it a secret. What about you? Have you truly believed in Jesus and asked him for his free gift of salvation? Or are you trying to follow the rules and be a good person so that you can go to heaven? Speak with me or another teacher after class so that we can show you how to be born again. What if you've already been born again? Maybe you're like a butterfly ready to fly but still hiding in the chrysalis because you don't want anyone to know you follow Jesus. Don't be like Nicodemus. Jesus gave you a new life and that's something worth celebrating and sharing with others. Thank you, Ms. Finale, for sharing the story of Nicodemus with us. Sometimes things aren't what they seem. And like Nicodemus, we may present ourselves one way to others, but then actually be something different in our hearts or when we're at home. But like those pictures that were zoomed out, Jesus can see all of us. He knows your whole life. And he knows your heart even better than you know it yourself. And even so, he loves you and he chose to die for you. And by his grace, God has shared with us everything we need to know to believe in him through his creation and in his word. In 2 Peter 1.3, Peter puts it like this. 
His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Trusting in him isn't about seeing something that's actually there, but like Nicodemus did, it's about believing in him and his sacrifice for us. So my question for you this week is, are you waiting until you know more to believe? Or is he prompting you to believe him today? I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you next week.